So they're changing early and souls level up requirement to plus 25. I personally think this is this is gonna feel kind of vicious. We may not know it yet, but I think this is gonna make it quite difficult to level up a Rillian Soul. And it's gonna cause people that are building a Rillian Soul decks to just not simply play, play like a quite powerful mid-range deck, if that makes sense. They're gonna have to focus more on having that total power and it's definitely not gonna be as easy. It's pretty much, to, keep, to sum it up, it requires most people to have an extra unit on the field, essentially, if you think about it like that. Radiant Guardian got the uh, nerf I was kind of predicting as we we're discussing in chat today. Um, r raising the price of Radiant Guardian pretty much makes it a dead card. I think this is somewhat acceptable. I think Radiant Card Guardian is still going to be a very powerful unit. But re decreasing its uh, attack down to 4 is going to stop it from pretty much blowing out aggro decks completely. As long as those aggro decks can figure out a way to work around it. Um, we should hopefully work out things. It's also going to stop Radiant Guardian from being able to trade into powerful 5 drops, so that's quite relevant. Um, keeping its life still, life still and tough is obviously very necessary. There's no other way to change this card. This is reasonable. Oh, so we are going to be seeing some, not so much buffs as much as a rework. This is kind of out of nowhere. So Inspiring Mentor will now be... Granting an ally in hand as per normal, everything's the same. They're changing its health and attack. They're pretty much getting swapped around. Um, this can now make Inspiring Mentor somewhat of an aggressive tool. I'm not sure if it's really going to increase its play weight. In terms of building aggro decks, I think we all know which aggro decks are the best. And that requires some sort of Bilgewater and Noxus. But let's see what the rest of the updates may have for us. Pix is getting a health increase from uh, 1 to 2. I still don't think this card's going to be very playable. I think you'd be better off making this a 1 mana 1-1, one, one, but then that would kind of be overtuned, right? Um, surprisingly enough, Jack the Winner is getting a adjustment to his HP as well, uh, from 6 down to 5. This is acceptable. Jack the Winner has felt like a pretty powerful 5 drop. The 6 HP definitely felt overtuned, and at least this puts it into better range with other 5 drops where, you know, 5 mana 5 fives with some sort of bonus effect can justify the stat reduction. So having a 6 HP on this with the effect was kind of overtuned. This is reasonable. Petty Officer getting the change I was kind of predicting. Like this makes a lot of sense to... Like Petty Officer, I discussed another card. I made some of these bold predictions and ended up being quite what I expected. Petty Officer now becomes uh, 1 HP back to what it used to be. And when Petty Officer was a 3 mana 3 one, it tended to see optional play and decks that were more considered about playing kegs would consider petty officer now petty officer you may still see it in aggro decks but there might be better three drops options obviously not as good as pre petty officer nerf but now it's not going to be as easy to justify running this and now when you're playing build water decks you can't just simply run this and it's also going to push build water to maybe build uh, more control decks because cards like Twist of Fate and Make It Rain are going to find more value against cards like this. Obviously, in some sort of weird mirror matchup, you're probably going to see both players running Petty Officer. One of them is going to get blown out by Make It Rain. Um, I'm not sure if Petty Officer remains a playable card. If people are still going to play this, it's going to raise the value of removal and just simple things like Vile Feast and uh, Unspeakable Horror, Withering Whale. All those powerful removal tools suddenly get a lot better. Uh, PNZ Static Shock suddenly becomes a very viable card for any PNZ decks. So Petty Officer is very justified nerf. It's also going to allow us to trade into it. It was very overtuned for what it was doing. Bastion is getting a buff. Wow, okay, so now we're going to grant the ally plus one plus one and spell shield. This is a quite incredible buff. I think this card was yet to still see its full potential. So maybe giving it a slight buff is going to definitely raise its potential because it was seeing cringe play, um, but still wasn't the highest valuable option. Oftentimes you might see Targon decks with be choosing between Hush and Bastion sometimes because deck slots were kind of limited. Um, wow, this actually, I'm expecting we might see some nerfs to Hush if they're doing something to Bastion to make, you know, balance it out a little bit. Um, this is actually quite an uh, unexpected buff and may just raise Bastion to a new level of play. Cosmic Inspiration is getting something done here. So no longer refills the mana. That's acceptable. I think that's an acceptable change to Cosmic Inspiration. The card definitely felt extremely powerful. Uh, the refilling of mana was 
definitely felt kind of unnecessary. Uh, now suddenly it's not the best option a lot of the time because it's pretty it's pretty easy for, for players to pick up Cosmic Inspiration and then refill their mana and still have a decent turn. You would have to assume that Cosmic Inspiration wants to be a card that you sacrifice your entire turn to play it. So that's an acceptable change. Um, I didn't see that coming. Grandfather Ramul is going to grant two allies. Wow, okay. This is not the change I was expecting. I was honestly expecting Grandfather Ramul to be more like a, a slight rework. But this is just a incredible buff. I'm not sure if it's really going to raise the stakes of his playability. Like, it's very cute. But the problem is, like, you're going to have to have units on the board. Uh, I may be wrong though, like who knows if you can blow out people on turn 8 with this, but I think a lot of games you want to be ending on turn 8, not granting HP to follow allies, unless this is some sort of new tech card for Aurelian Soul decks. I mean, you get the instant buff, so if you have units in the field, you don't have to worry about the interact ability from your opponent, so that's kind of cute. Who knows, I'm sure we'll see some experimentation, but I still feel like it's in almost the same spot as it was before. I don't know if like... Granting two hours is going to be worth because it, you have to first of all have those units on the field. This feels like a win more card and I think in terms of winning more, there's simply better options for literally winning the game. Hush is getting a change. Okay, let's go. So a new tech silence unit this round, create a fleeting hush in hand, it costs one more. So it's no longer unlimited hush. We now have hush in a spot where it's going to give you one more it's not unlimited oh sorry that's incorrect excuse me you will cause obviously the next hush is going to be fleeting as well so basically they're going to get mana increases as you go look this is the hot topic card right now like i am not sure if this is really going to be a justifiable change the fact that you can still play the first one for three mana at burst speed is the biggest issue um i think simply changing it to four mana would have been a more acceptable option but let's how about we read the text here hush is the card that the live design team has spent a lot of time evaluating. Its ability to silence even champions for a round was meant to add to Law's interactivity, unironically not interactivity. <laughs> Allowing previously unavailable counterplay, like I understand that this card does provide counterplay, but only in the Targon region, to certain strategies, to basically all strategies. Uh, certain strategies are like cool strategies, like Hush, definitely destroys interesting strategies that's the problem with this card like i tried playing some braum Tarek recently on the ladder hoping i could buff up my beefy units and i just got completely ruined by hush um it's almost like there's some decks that can't exist because hush exists and that's simply the problem in the combinations however hush's repeated fleeting design is also contributing to the opposite by excessively excessively punishing certain strategies itself shutting down counterplay as true however Playing one and then two, I don't know. Initially, we locked in the change you see here for patch 1.1 to make it more difficult for a single hush to apply multiple silences. However, since we continue to discuss the card and listen to your feedback, ultimately the ability to silence champions is a core strength of this card. I agree. I think hush should be able to target champions. We want to preserve and target on. On the other hand, repeatable AOE access to silence is definitely difficult to justify in a region that we also want to have general weakest weakness to wide boards in combat true targon does kind of struggle into wide boards for that reason we've decided to ready another change for next patch as well so it looks like they have another change ready i believe this is going to be somewhat of a increasing the initial mana cost where we'll remove so as well where we'll remove hush's repeatable aspect entirely and reduce its cost this change should focus on Hush and its core intended function and generally reduce frustration. So it looks like they're going to see how it feels at this kind of range. I think still the card is going to crush people's souls. If they want to make this a one-off whammy card that costs like one mana, for example, that's that's cool, man. Like I'm, I'd be down for a Hush that like costs one mana and silence the unit this round once. I think that's going to change this card's functionality completely. Um, Hush is just insane value, right? Uh, Mountain Goat definitely got the change I was very much expecting. We heard Tarek's followers were going to get an update, a buff. 
Mountain Goat going to uh, 2 HP is a reasonable change and we might see some experimentation with this. Uh, I still ultimately think the card's not going to be that great. However, this is a very acceptable change. Um, it's now on par with other fantastic two drops. I have no idea why this was even at one HP. Did they really think the gems were that high value? I disagree. And that pretty much wraps up all of the card changes that we have. We also have some personalization, the guardians. This Astro Guardian looks quite fantastic. Not gonna lie, the butterfly is very cool. We have a little card back here with the Celestials that kind of looks pog. Uh, we have some new bundles. Uh, minion Guardian bundle. So we already have the Minion Guardian. We also have the Blue Minion and the Emote. Um, we also have some single player lab Journey to the Peak. This is interesting. Let's actually just go through this very quickly. In-game leaderboards. Holy pog. That's what they meant by in-game leaderboards. Look, forget about this. Some sort of weird single player experience for the lab this time. Sounds kind of pog. Maybe they give us some cool rewards. I don't know. Uh, don't see anything about rewards here. Okay, let's look at this. In-game leaderboard. The master's leaderboard shows on top who's on top of the ranked ladder on your shard and who's on the rise. The friends leaderboard shows how you stack with your friends on your ranked climb. This is extremely pog. This is just some more excellent additions to the game. Shame I can't see my name there right now, but that's cool. So this patch, we're adding two in-game leaderboards that are intended. Blah, blah, blah. Friends leaderboard, blah, blah, blah. I think this is a fantastic add. Like nothing that's like obviously super impactful to Runeterra itself, but I think a lot of people are going to really appreciate, you know, Runeterra going out of their way to add in such a cool thing in game that seems like it should be realistically in game. Now I won't have to constantly be going out of my way to find out where I stack. Hopefully this updates quite quickly in game, in real time, and that's going to make this a very fantastic addition to the game. Expeditions and uh, archetypes, like uh, expeditions, whatever. Tire now supported, excellent. Um, and yeah, that's gonna wrap up patch 1.1 guys. Fantastic. I think some of these changes were justified. I think uh, we we heard that we're gonna make some ch changes to Targon. In the end, if you wanna completely raise the total power required to flip a Rillian Soul and not touch anything else around it, that's fine. Um, great. Great changes, kind of predictable changes. The Bastion's kind of a, definitely a bit of a highlight here. I think that card's going to start to see play. Grandfather Ramal, meh. Uh, Hush, fantastic. I guess for now, in the end, let's just get Hush to that single copy powerful card. You guys have a fantastic day. See you soon.